History is so important to Piners. There's a spirit here, there's a soul here. It's intangible, yet somehow it's tangible. You feel it. We've got an incredible story to tell. And you can reconnect with, with the Payne Stewart story. Payne Stewart is the 1999 U.S. Open champion. Oh, my. What a clutch putt. What we've done over the last four or five years, tried to make Piners feel a little more accessible, a little less formal, and add some fun. It really is that lack of pretense. The expectation that there may be some, and then the realization that there's not. People who come from all walks of life can find something here that clicks with them. We understand golfers, and we want golfers to feel comfortable when they're in Piners. Piners number eight is just a great contrast to the other things that you have at Piners. You've driven four minutes to get there but you feel like you're in a totally different place. Suddenly you realize that you're in the middle of this sanctuary. Tremendous amount of wildlife out there. He said, watch out for the snakes. Oh, uh, so there's bite in the back of my leg, these thorns, oh. But you get these wastelands and, and wetlands that you just don't see on the other courses at Pinehurst. You have a lot of choices that you have to make around the greens and, and choices oh. sometimes can be the enemy of good golf. You have this great sense of arrival, and it really does kind of feel like a private club for the day. After a wonderful experience of the Tobacco Road Golf Club, the crew heads 30 minutes south to the iconic Pinehurst Resort. I'll be up into your left. Okay. And guys, welcome to Pinehurst. Upon arrival at the Carolina Hotel, they are greeted by the president of Pinehurst Resort, Tom Pashley. Just based on some of the things that I had watched, I was, I was, I, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. Now I should point out that I, I married a, a beautiful Midwestern girl from Iowa. So Trent, in his background, I felt like we had some some commonalities there. But quickly, after spending a little bit of time with the guys, I, I realized that we had kindred golf souls. Carolina dining room breakfast is not to be missed. Especially tomorrow, since you get 11.30. Right. Tomorrow's your day to kind of yeah. do yeah. for breakfast. sure. So with breakfast appointments made, they're off to their Dornick Cottage, where they'll be staying the next few days. The same place course architect Donald Ross once lived. This is Donald Ross's office, his original office, yeah. Seeing his office, the, some of the blueprints, some of the photos of he and his wife and his family, from legitimately 100 years ago, 110, 120 years ago, uh, doing the same stuff that we were about to do was, I mean, it's probably the coolest, you know, golf experience, not on a golf course, that, that I've ever had. This is like the formal living room. Down there is that little scotch room. This is nice. What? This is really nice right here. As the boys are given a grand tour of this fine home, they begin to pick their bedrooms and what could be a sign of things to come. Frankie completely botches it. You know what? I'm claiming this one. This one has a, uh, a lighter, girlier feel. This and is your room. <laughs> and this is my room. Is this All right? wallpaper? Everything about this room makes me feel at home. This is where Don Ross is like seven-year-old daughter slept. Yeah. Hit the bed. Give it a, give it a whirl. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's the one. Just feels right. <laughs> I chose the wrong room. You guys chose too early. You guys chose way, 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 way too early. Uh, you know, you shoot 113. <laughs> you're, just, you're the king. There's three bathrooms oh, in this I room. Need, I need different places to shit. I deserve this. <laughs> I am the most important. Uh, if you guys want to shuttle, there's phones in each of your rooms and also in the lobby downstairs or okay. right in the little um, foyer area. Just pick up the phone, dial zero, tell them you're doing a cottage. They know you're here. They'll come pick you up in a white shuttle van. It takes five, ten minutes to get here for a shuttle, mm -hmm. and it'll take you wherever you want to go on the property. It is like a five-star museum. Yeah. yeah. Not only is it the home of Ross, but he completely designed it himself. It is named after his hometown in Scotland, 
It looks like any ordinary home, but it is a testament to marriage and compromise. A traditional front to the house to please Ross, and a colonial look to the back to appease his wife. The home sits adjacent to the third green on the number two course. Gentlemen, are we heading to the Carolina for breakfast or yes. are we heading right up to the clubhouse? Uh, Carolina. Yeah, right. I mean, you can't hold these greens at all. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. Dude, every end of the green is like this. Unsurprisingly, Frankie is already freaking out as we pull up to the Carolina Hotel for a highly regarded breakfast. And boy, did it live up to the hype. I don't even usually go for the corned beef hash, but I got a little bacon, a little eggs with cheese, a little corned beef hash, but they have everything up there. Anything you could ever want, omelets, waffles, pancakes, every kind of egg, everything. This is heaven. She said, if we don't have it, I will tell the chef and he will make it for you. That's the kind of place we're dealing with. Trent Daddy's in the lead at 78 under par. Wow. Yep. Frankie's in second at 20 under par. Riggs in third at 12 under par. All right. Skins are six to six to six. Today we got Pinehurst number eight. We're gonna run the skins again. On the number eight course, I get seven shots. Frankie gets 11, Trent gets 29, which means <laughs> Frankie will get four yet again. Trent Daddy will get 22 yet again. Off to the number eight course, a short four minute drive from the main clubhouse that was built to celebrate Pinehurst's first 100 years, aptly known as the Centennial. It's been nine years, big deal to build a new golf course at Pinehurst to commemorate 100 years of history. And so Tom Fazio was chosen, who in, in the mid 90s was building the best golf course all over the world. So Fazio was one of the more prolific golf architects of that time. People enjoy playing the golf course. I think it has a lot to do with that enjoyment factor, has a lot to do with the, the style of what we like to build using the natural environments that, to work with, plus uh, the drama and the excitement that were created. I think it's a little bit of luck as well. How do you create a golf course for the best players in the world and then for the rest of us? That's what we've always worked on, and the detail of that relates to hazard placement, it relates to green angles, it relates to the detail, and then when I put in the other factor, I really don't want any of the golf courses ever to be the same. The clubhouse features nearly 7,000 square feet of beautiful indoor and outdoor space. It is here where Trent sets today's goal. Very course cool. record 64, if you can touch it. Okay. You got that? Ooh, yeah. <laughs> yep. 64. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm going to try to not double it. That'll be my goal. Yeah. Try not to double the course. No, seriously. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You got it. 128? It's in my brain now, yeah. 128 is the goal. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm equally as excited as I was for Tobacco Road right now. First Pinehurst golf experience, man. A quick range session goes better for some than others. Uh, I'm just trying to get this right now, but really bad range stuff so far. I haven't really done anything. Just know your limits. That's what I would say to everyone, even in your own life. Know your limits. Don't go crazy. Yeah. Just have fun. Feels like it's gonna stop, and then like 12 feet later it stops. I'm really just here to have fun and watch Frankie uh, on the Pioneer Screens finally. That's like, that's kind of my main reason for being here. I knew from the second we got onto the first putting green at Pioneer's number eight, that I was in for a really long day. So what is the, what's the strategy? Just pray. You know, get religious. And with little confidence, round two of the trip at Pinehurst number eight begins. Number eight opened in 1996 and combines classic Donald Ross concepts with the whimsical snarls that have become Fazio's calling card. Minifield number eight synthesizes all the elements of the Pinehurst golf experience into one layout. The opening hole is a par four slight dog leg left. A well-struck tee shot to the right center of this fairway is a good start to your day. Towering pine trees line the fairway on both sides, something you'll see a lot of. A ridge that runs vertically divides the green into left and right sections. But first, 
Let's see who rounds out our foursome today. I'm playing against Marty, CEO of CBDMD. If I win, giving him four side, $1,000 That's it. from Marty to the Kevin Kisner Foundation. Right. If I lose, it goes to your If family. I lose, yeah. I'm going to Best Buddies, Anthony, Anthony Shriver. That's perfect. That's five. Burn oh it. my gosh. That's Dinger perfect. from Frank. Look at that thing running. So the thing about Trent is, off every first tee shot, he's incredible. Don't jinx him. Yeah, you can just take it to the bank with this kid. Good job. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> first tee? Yeah, man. There's just nothing to it. When's the last time you hit a bad shot on the first tee? I don't even remember. It's been so long. Be good. Hey, Trent. Bring my putter. Oh. Hey, Trent, why don't you bring my putter? Yeah, motherfucker. I already got it. He says it in jest, I think. And, you know, I like grabbing my guy's putter. He had a hell of a second shot, so, you know, he earned it. The, the greens being the color that they were were pretty interesting. I never seen greens that color. Slick, man. Yeah, they looked like asphalt. They're called slick green, is what they're called. That, like if that's Crayola, you get a box of crayons. That one, that color is called slick green, and it's fucking dangerous. The optimal drive on the par five second hole is down the left center part of the fairway. If reaching this green in two is not an option, the second shot should be played to the center of the fairway to allow for a flat line. The front plateau of this green hides the undulation in the center, and as you can see is guarded by two front bunkers as well. So Marty and I off the tee landed in the same area, and we got confused. He hit my ball, I hit his ball, and then we advanced it. And that's when we realized the confusion after we hit the ball, but we're all good. We just switched out balls. Me and Marty are fine. We're best buds. Me and Marty switching. <laughs> the predominant slope is from right to left. And it seems as though Riggs already knows that. Wow, what a putt. Nice putt. Everybody relax. I've had hot starts before. We gotta stay focused, right? Right. Just, I got you just where I want you. It was amazing, but I'm, again, I'm trying to like control my emotions because I've had back-to-back on-camera collapses. I gotta stay focused, gotta stay focused. A birdie for Riggs as we look at number three. The ideal tee shot on this dramatic par four should favor the right center of the fairway. Distance control is imperative on this uphill approach. Any shots coming up short will collect below the putting surface like these two. Oh, yeah. One thing I gotta fix is still the irons. And I told you this now. You're afraid of the ground. I'm afraid of the ground. I am afraid of the ground. I cannot hit my oh, irons. Anybody out there who can hypnotize me into not being afraid of the ground, I'll pick big money. Nope. Baby did. This green is bisected by a ridge that runs from front to back. However, still no problem for rigs. One under through three. Fuck yeah. Every guy that walks by goes, Frankie, but or not. You know what? I can't hit my wedge. Like, what can't you do in life? Probably can't fuck your wife. Is that comment a little too much? One could argue that. But the thing is, I'll never say something like that to someone's face because I know I'll get beat up. I'm a huge shit talker behind people's backs because I can't back it up when the confrontation starts. One of the toughest holes on the course is the par four fourth. The safe play is down the center, but some distance can be cut off by carrying the tee shot over the corner of the large waste area on the left, which should play nicely for Trent's cutting drive. Is that stuff on the left scare you? Nope. Yep. Nope. Oh, maybe not. I should be scared of everything on every golf course, even decent golfers sort of know where their ball is going to go. I am not in that place yet. The second shot will be downhill with really no room for error without finding sand. Wow, I'm actually playing really well today through the first couple holes. That's just I can't get off the tee. I'm topping them. I'm hitting them right. Everything else, I'm like going like fairway to green. Not so fast, Frankie. Have you seen yourself on the greens thus far? 
I feel like a three-putt demon has taken over your body. I can't putt. Yeah, you're standing over the putts, and you're looking up and going, I have no clue how hard to hit this. No, thing. pace has, has just completely left my brain. A theme for Frankie takes shape as we go to the par three number five. We start behind the hole, and you can see there is water on the left. Avoiding the bunker in the front of this green makes club selection important on this deceptively difficult short hole. 200 bucks, winner gets to put uh, 200 bucks. closest to, to the pin. pin to the charity. Uh oh, is the Kisner Foundation? Wow! Hell yeah. Sky. Oh, wait, sky. I feel so confident with my irons right now. Can't hit anything off the tee. It's scary. This green slopes from back to front and right to left. But once again, no hesitation from Riggs. I felt good at, at number eight. The way we started, the way the course looked, the way the greens were. I'm donating my money to the Kevin Kisner Foundation. That's our guy. The way the greens were rolling, I just felt really good. And then that fucking guy stole my golf ball. And that kind of derailed everything. Uh, let's find out what he is talking about, shall we? The six is a long par five. The tee shot should be played towards the center to allow for a good angle in on the second shot. However, the landing area for the second shot is well guarded. Not only by bunkers, but apparently other players on the hole. I mean, when we play, we're a little slow because we're trying to capture the whole course do it justice, film all of our shots. And the guys behind us were clearly a little frustrated. So we said, we'll hit our tee shots. We'll let these guys play through. That's what happened. We waited, they played through. And then we, after they played through, went up to then continue our round behind them, except I couldn't because my golf ball wasn't there. I was like, I'm gonna ask those guys on seven if somebody took my ball. Wild move. And then the guy was like, oh yeah, he did. I picked up my ball. He took he your ball. That's insane. He's like, oh yeah, that guy up there grabbed it. I was like, where was it? He goes, this is the fairway. I was like, why'd he grab it? They're like, oh, he's up there. I don't know. I was like, then he drove away. The bill of the day comes if some guy stole my ball, so I didn't get to get out of the fairway, which is insane. A tough break for Riggs heading to number seven. This par four is a relatively straight shot all the way there. A solid tee shot will leave an approach off of a slightly downhill lie with a short iron. Bang. Yes. Oh, yeah. Man. Here we go. Perfect. Paint the picture. Ball. Yep. Great swing, Frank. Go. Found a ball. Found a ball off a tee. You better know your distances with a deep bunker guarding the front left and a severe drop off of the back of this green. Gotta be more aggressive. Get up. Get over that hill. Nightmare putt coming. It's never easy. It's a simple hole, so why is Riggs completely baffled? Because now he just left my ball sitting in the fairway here. I think he's like, he's trying to press me pretty good and he has. Like who, how would it go through your head that we're playing through, there's a ball in the middle of the fairway, but I'm gonna just pick it up. Like how, what is wrong with that guy's brain? And then I just, I'm not mentally tough enough. I'm kind of like Borelli at that point, And my, uh, I just mentally collapsed and I just couldn't play golf after that. <laughs> you loser. What was that? So got Be good. Sit. You gotta bite. Hit it. No. Oh. Oh. Bite. Oh no. Oh, oh no. Why? 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 The eighth hole is a beautiful long par three that requires accuracy to this large deep green. Tee shots should favor the left side of it to avoid the deep bunker and hazard to the right. The green is fairly flat, but that certainly doesn't help Frankie today. 
What's your last thought or picture in your brain before you strike a putt? It's no joke. It's just a 100% guess. The ideal drive on the ninth is just over the left edge of the large waist area on the right. Club selection for your approach shot is imperative. The green is divided by a ridge that runs throughout the middle from front to back. Any shots that come up short will collect well below the putting surface. Wow. Wow. How did that thing stick up there? I'm thinking I need to make one putt. Honestly, I think I've three putt every single hole here at Pine Harris. We're on the ninth hole. Should we tape Frankie to the top of the house and hope he gets struck by You hear about that like, oh my gosh, my cousin, she was deaf and then she stood out. She was got caught out in a rainstorm and she got struck by a lightning and now she can hear you again. You know what might help me putt is if you licked my fucking grunt. All right. All right? Down 35 skins. I have three putted every single <laughs> hole. I haven't been given one putt. I can't get anything within two feet to the pin. That was awful. That made me feel bad. What's that? It made me feel really bad. 39 on the front, I went. Went under through five. Guy stole my ball from the middle of the fairway on six. Then I went bogey, 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 bogey to shoot 39. So am I rattled? Yes. Rattled Riggs and the gang head to 10. This downhill par four begins the back nine in grand fashion. The optimum position off the tee is to favor the right center of the fairway. The approach shot will be from a slight downhill lie. That opening in the front of the green will allow a shot to bounce on the putting surface. However, keeping it on there is another story. Just run, just, just but not too far. Just gonna listen. Just gonna go too far. Sit! Sit! See ya. Oh! And there it goes. How? That thing was not going that fast. See ya. Holy shit. I try and remember like what it felt like to putt my last one, and if that one went too far, I try and I try and think to just putt a little bit less than that. And it's just it's it's a guessing game. The putting struggles continue for Frankie as we go to the majestic 11th hole. This long par five requires three good shots to reach the green. It's lined with tall pines and bunkers scattered on each side of the fairway. The ideal second shot should favor the right center of the short grass. You want to steer clear of the deep green side bunker on the right. This is a hybrid. We got 300, what did you say, Dalton? 340? 340 yards away. If I could use this club and not be ridiculed by society, I would use this club every single shot. I can just control it more than any other club. Irons are bullshit. Yeah, Trent. Irons are total bullshit. It slopes from front to back and right to left where the woes continue so Frankie searches for answers. Dude, this whole golf course is a roller coaster. I'm gonna shoot another fucking 95 to 100. It's crazy. I, I guess that's just like how I am now. I just don't shoot 80s anymore. It's crazy. I can't putt, I can't chip, I can't drive. I'm putting righty. I'm, I think I'm gonna start putting righty. Can't hurt to try. Oh. It's like, it, it's better though. Yeah, you look more, you look more confident <laughs> over the ball, which is stunning. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's allowed, like by the rules of golf, but on the short, like five footer, six footers, I'm gonna be putting righty. Yeah, I think he's gotta try something. He just has to try something. I mean, this has been. He looks like he's the. Uh, looks like he's like an alien who just got to Earth for the first time and doesn't understand gravity or anything. Accuracy is essential on this short par four. 
The tee shot should favor the left side of the fairway, utilizing its left to right slope. Doing so will avoid the long skinny waist areas on the right. This shallow green is well guarded in the front and back, so accuracy and distance on your approach are a must. You are hitting consistently better up the tee than me. It's not even close. Oh, today you hit. I shanked the ball you had all over the place. You had 17 bad driver swings hit. Here's the result of one of those terrible driver swings Trent's talking about. Everyone heads up. How the hell did he end up here? Ah, Woo! It's out. Boy, almost threw out my taint. <laughs> Damn, spraying the grundle. I didn't have my putting stroke going into that trip. I could not decipher what a five foot putt was or a 25 foot putt was. I had no touch, no feel. And when you're playing at Pinehurst, the most treacherous greens arguably in America, you're gonna be in for a really long trip. 13 is a medium length par three and pretty straightforward. Waste areas align the two sides and aren't the only two things you need to look out for. Here we go. Oh. I was back there, I was getting my ball and I, I looked down and I thought I felt something burning on my pinky and it was an ant and it was just biting the shit. Look, you can see a little white mark. My pinky, there's another one. Dalton said that ants don't bite. He's like, how the hell is he getting bit by ants? Who did? Trent. <laughs> what? I cannot say this any clearer. I got bit by an ant. It hurt really, really bad. After battling through a devastating ant attack, Trent lines up for a difficult downhill putt. It did screw up the rest of my round because then the rest of the day, I was yeah. feeling phantom yeah. ants all over. Oh! Oh! What? You get bit by one ant, and the rest of the day I thought one was crawling up my arm, crawling up my legs. After getting bit by an ant, no less. Ants don't bite, I heard. Are you sure? Because my finger's getting real puffy. I noticed when I put my, my pinkies up to the camera, it didn't look that different, but at the time, it felt like one had swollen to a ginormous size. It just didn't look that way on camera, but I got bit by an ant. There is no denying that. All right, Frankie. Let's see that righty stroke. It's almost better not knowing, like you like have it in the back of your mind where it's like, if I had switched righty, I bet it'd be better, but now it's not completely over. Yup, that's what we all thought. The par 4 14th is where things get interesting for everyone. It requires you to carry some wasteland off the tee. The optimum position is left center of the fairway so that any hole location is accessible. Too far right, and you'll wind up like rigs here. There is a little window, man. Look at that. Nope. So much for that window. Huh, <laughs> rigs. This could be one of the more impossible 239 shots I've ever seen. And people seem to be downplaying the, that I got bit by an ant. You didn't get bit by an ant. Are you? He's, he lives here, all right? And he's saying that they bite, right? Yeah, they do. I looked down at my hand, and there was a little guy burrowing in there, okay? And it hurt. It hurt I, real fucking I bad. I thought it was a sausage. You're such a dick. <laughs> You're such a dick. <laughs> Jimmy Dean's on the end of my fist. Oh, I haven't gnawed on one of these. <laughs> oh my gosh. So much butter and sodium. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is that caramel I taste? <laughs> Toffee caramel? <laughs> Bread pudding? Oh my oh, god. Be oh. perfect. <laughs> Just sit. Just sit. Now you're fine. Frankie also found himself in the pot. Oh no! Oh, oh, oh. Catch it! Catch it! <laughs> I wanted to catch it so bad. I fucking hate myself. No! <laughs> you know, looking at that video and seeing myself running around Piner's number eight, flailing my skinny arms and my legs, I looked a little ridiculous. And then all of a sudden, you walk into this like snake pit 
and that's when you know we're not even playing golf anymore. We're just here to survive. Let's just get through the 18 holes because clearly the golf part's not working. Hey, watch out for the ants. He said watch out for the snakes. Watch out for the ants. How do we not, how do we know one of these noises aren't snakes? Pinehurst had already defeated me and we had just started the trip. I'm collapsing again, I'm collapsing. I think I made a triple. And when you make a triple that late in the round on that gorgeous of a golf hole, there's really no way to recover from that either. And I didn't recover. Dude, I'm done, man. That's a triple. I've doubled the last three holes, just tripled this one. I'm going to shoot 100 today. Really bad stuff. No one's best effort there, but perhaps 15 could lift some spirits. This par three plays a little downhill, but the deep green and unpredictable winds makes you think on the tee box. It also makes us think if Trent is still on pace to reach his goal. My goal initially, well, like when we talked to the guys in the clubhouse, it was to beat the course record of 64 times two. So I wanted to beat 128. How are we doing? Shot, shot 57 on the front, so okay. that's good. Uh, that's and I've been playing better now. I made a nine on the last hole though, so that set us back pretty good. But I think we're still on, on, on pace to break the course record times two. The ideal drive on 16 will favor the left half of this well-bunkered fairway and should give you a full view of the green. The second shot will be to a crown green that has three distinct sections. The right half is higher than the left and a ridge separates the left front from the back. And to no surprise, Frankie couldn't figure it out. When you have as bad of a short game as me, you're going to go out there from time to time and three putt every single hole you play. It's just the way the cookie crumbles for me. No, I think that's it. I think I think a plus 15 on the back, which I, I shot 49 up front, which would be 49 41 against 100. 17 is the last par 5 of the day. A drive that finds the center of the fairway is the best beginning to this reachable hole. If going for the green is not an option, the second shot should be played to the center of the landing area that begins to narrow around 100 yards in. The left side of this green is higher than the right, with a ridge running from front to back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Daddy might be able to make a birdie. <laughs> Sounds oh, about right. right here, <laughs> That's scary. I was putting for birdie, I made a seven. This solid finishing hole requires a strong drive that favors the right center of this fairway sloping from right to left. The demanding second shot may require a long iron or fairway wood up the hill to a well bunkered green. In Trent's case, he just wants to make it off the course with as little insect bites as possible. Cut for him, Come cut back for him late. Come on, kick right. On the left hand side is a very bad area. There's some water. You know, you're going to deal with all kinds of critters. We have water moccasins, we have copperheads. You know, all kinds of bad stuff in there. The worst I thought that was going to happen was I was going to get a thorn in the back of my leg or maybe some poison ivy, which would not have been great. But I thought that was the worst it could be. That would be a good place to be if you were a snake. But there's not going to be a, a person crazy enough to to walk into that that snake farm. Ah. Trent was essentially immersed himself with like the worst snakes in North Carolina that I think will like eat people whole. Oh, I feel like something's biting my leg. Our caddies were like, that is one of the most dangerous spots at all of Piners. There are gigantic snakes back there that will just pull you under and kill you. Dude, something is, oh, something is biting in the back of my leg, these thorns. Oh, God. Come on. Oh. 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 What contact? Ah! 
And it's like there's evil serpents in there that are hungry and looking for someone like Trent, who's got a lot of meat on him, to, to take out. And luckily, again, he didn't know that till afterwards, but it was terrifying. I'm glad Trent survived because he easily could not have. The spacious green has a large undulation in the middle that divides it into three sections. Frankie just needs to two putt for par to end the day on a positive note. Oh. Fight. Fight! They just don't stop. I'm also so fucked that I can't hit like two footers. I can't take the club back and go forward. That last one on 18 was tough. I can't hit two footers, three footers. Yeah. I can if I just step up to it and knock it in. If I stand over the ball, no chance. The putter's really bad, the driver's really bad, the irons aren't bad, but I still, I shot a career high today. There's really no getting around how bad I was on the greens that day. From hole one to hole 18, I could not figure it out. I feel like I'm, I'm feeding off of Frankie's negative energy right now, but I feel pretty good about that round. If I can just clean up the putting mistakes, I can, I, I can break on you. Yeah, I had Trent Daddy at a 57-55. <laughs> I had me at 30, 39.43 for an 82. I had 39 in the prime. I lost track of the other back. Uh, yeah, 82 for Riggs. 103, I'm, I mean. Trent, 112. That was so fun, and you're telling me number two and number four in the cradle are supposed to be way better than that? Like, how can that be possible? So I was jacked up, and I think number eight was about as cool of like a satellite um, other Pinehurst course experiences I could have possibly imagined. The guys got their first Pinehurst experience under their belt, and Trent remains unharmed even after this. Oh, oh, oh shit, you're right. Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Oh, foreplay on the shoes, pineapples on the socks. Bang! Oh. I pulled something. <laughs>